How's it going, guys? We're back. We're here <laughs> with this game again. Um, yeah, Hooked on You, the Dead by Daylight dating sim that I spent money for. Last we left off, uh, I have to pick who I want to talk to first, so I've been trying to think about this a lot. Um, in my recent Dead by Daylight matches, I've had a lot of Huntresses, so I'm getting a little sick of Huntress, so just because of that, I'm not picking Huntress. Sorry, Huntress fans. Uh, Daddy Trapper, as much as I think he's awesome, he's also kind of a dick. So, I'm not gonna pick him just for that reason. Which leads me to Wraith or Spirit. And honestly, I kind of like both of them. I think I have a better connection with Spirit right now, but I don't know too much about Wraith. So I think I'm gonna go with Wraith, just on the fact that I don't really know too much about him just yet, and I want to learn a little more. So we're gonna go with Wraith. Dot dot dot. Lots more dots. I don't want this. Fuck! Son of a bitch. Okay. Not yet. Maybe not ever. Ouch. Okay, chat later. Oh boy, he's gonna be a fun one to get to know. That was it. That... That was the conversation I got with Wraith was, you know, he doesn't want to talk to me. Wow. Hey, you know, maybe I should have gone spirit. Is there a rewind function? Anything, you know, any, uh, rewind so I can reload? Just made my choice. We'll live with it. Everyone put down your appetizers. I'm bored and on my yacht, that's unacceptable. Declare. Yes, sir. Prepare a libation, something that will impress our new guests. By the looks of them, shouldn't take too much. Color, make sure we got both boozy and non-alcoholic versions available. Nobody has to drink if they don't want to. I'm a killer, not an asshole. That's debatable, but... Dip Clan, Color, I thought their names were Dwight and Claudette. Who the hell are Dwight and Claudette? Hey, Daryl and Christina. You know those two? Maybe they work on that other island. You, Project V. Ready your mouth hole. Wow, this guy really knows how to sell a drink. Well, oh, sorry. While undoubtedly crass, he does have a point. A minigame is incoming, and the success or failure of your quest may very well depend on the readiness of your... Many games consist of two parts. On top, a pointer which rotates in a clockwise direction. And on the bottom, a target you're going to be pointing at. Hmm, they seem oddly familiar. Sometimes the target is immediately visible, sometimes it's hidden until the pointer arrives. Press the spacebar to stop the pointer while over the target to win. Fail to land on the target and you will lose. To achieve a perfect success, land on the start of the target area, not the end. Okay, ready to play, or would you like me to repeat that? Huh. <sighs> Alright, let's see. Ready. Away we go. The party never stops. Shots, shots, shots! Okay. Oh, fuck. That was way too early. You missed completely. <laughs> oh shit, we're still going. There we go. Perfect. I redeemed myself. Oh my god, it's going faster. Yes, perfect. Two for three ain't bad. Oh, it's still going. Okay. Not bad. Yeah, okay. It's still a succeed. Oh my god. Oh, too early. You missed completely. The whole am amnesiac thing is already a lot to take in without also pouring a bunch of drinks on top of it, so it's not unexpected that you didn't perform perfectly. Lucky for, y lucky for you, my desire for perfection is only matched by my enjoyment in watching losers fail publicly. I don't think I did that bad. But don't expect luck to get you through this forever. Overwhelmed by the afternoon's activity, you feel yourself spinning out of control. 
Listen for drinks, the question to perform, the rocking of the ship. Smartly, you pound a pitcher of water before everyone goes dark around you. And it turns out a quick nap was just what you needed. When you come to, Dwight and Claudette are somehow already back on shore waving at the boat. I'm pretty sure that means it's time to head back and leave this yacht behind. What a shame, too. Trapper planned to serve live monkey brains as an entree. How do you have live monkey brains? Like, are the monkeys still alive and you just cut open their head and, like, you just literally just eat the brains as the monkey's sitting there? Like, I don't know. No thanks. You know, I don't, I don't really want to be with Tra Daddy Trapper anymore. I don't like his uh, taste in food. Seems like the next activity is meal time. How quaint. You're expecting what? Capture the flag? Do you know how complicated it is to run a game like that? Much more so than sitting and talking? I mean, I can't like capture the flag. You arrive at the cookout area to find an assortment of picnic tables scattered about around. What were you expecting? Some kind of grand hall with a huge banquet table? This ain't some prestigious fantasy ep epic like you find on cable. Dwight and Claudette usher you to your seat, but there's very limited seating directly around you. And oh, great, terrific. It seems that everyone wants to sit next to you. Even better is that they don't want to sit next to certain other people either. To start, no one wants to sit next to Trapper. Makes sense. Meanwhile, he refuses to sit next to Wraith or Trickster. The Trickster's here? What? Oh my god, he is here. Oh yeah, Trickster is here. Surprise. Yeah, well, they don't call him Expected Stir. I'm sorry. Even I get nervous around crowds of killers and my whole stink gets a little flustered. I didn't know Trickster's here. God, now I need a voice for Trickster. Hey there, you're looking good, Project V. Real good. He has a foam bat, I just noticed. And we literally can't let Huntress and Trapper sit together. No, seriously, their arms are too big. They can't fit at the table if they sit side by side. <laughs> Look at this. We can't even fit everyone on screen at the same time. You probably think it was an error, but it's not. It's completely intentional. Let that be a lesson for you. To you, every error you think you see is a choice. Got that? Okay, Dwight and Claudette are direct in traffic. You sit on one side, the rest of them will sit opposite you. Huntress and Trapper can sit at the ends with their enormous sexy arms. Now that everyone is seated, we can begin dinner. Tonight's meal was prepared slowly and carefully with both love and hate for 12 hours over a spit. We hope, we hope you all enjoy. We really, really hope you do. Hey, you didn't actually tell us what you're serving. What are we eating? It's me! Seasoned with a specific number of special herbs and spices that we simply can't divulge. My favorite. Da, me is good. <laughs> oh. Me is murder. Maybe I should just make Wraith sound like it's super depressed. Which, you know, considering what you've been up to, who are you to get judgy now? I'm just, I'm just sharing facts, and you need to murder something to eat its meat, so that's like, technically true. I'm gonna make him like Eeyore, he's gonna be the Eeyore of the group. Technically true is the best kind of true. Da, okay, enough yapping, let's eat. Hey Project V, you thinking what I'm thinking? It's gonna per be a person on that spit, right? Or several parts of overlapping people, perhaps. God, I hope not. I haven't seen many pigs wearing palm tree button-down prints, you know. When you look closely at the spit, you spot what definitely appears to be scraps of fabric sandwiched between some layers of meat. I think I might be sick. Is there anything else to eat? This took 12 hours. And we do literally everything on this island. Actually, there's not one thing you're doing today. You're not curving up this delectable meat. Duh. Well, he's right for a change. Because I am. 
with my broad axe. It's the perfect tool for easily chopping anything in twain. First, who says twain? Sometimes I swear it's like we're all from completely different historical eras. Second, I'll handle this with my cleaver. Fast, powerful, and clean. At least it's clean when the meat is cooked. No blood. Uh, you two and your ridiculous bicep swinging contest. Enough. Grow up. Obviously, my gorgeous katana is the only option. Ops. I do really like her, like, glass katana she has in the game. The hell it is. Oh, shit. She has a dark side. Uh, I'll show you both my katana and send you to actual hell if you like. Please stop. Please. I hate when we fight. Or talk. Or even when we look at each other in the eye. Great. Oh, duh. Great. Instead of slicing it up, you can club it to a second death. Hey, Project B, I know this isn't what you want to eat, but hurry up and volunteer to curve up Felix. I mean, dinner. Not Felix. I like Felix. Otherwise, this will go on for hours. No hyperbole. They once argued over who had the most effective weapons for 72 hours straight. And it doesn't matter which one doesn't. When they're done, they would take even longer cleaning their weapon. All while explaining the value and maintaining your tools. They do to clean their weapon. Despite being a bunch of cold-blooded killers, for some reason they're always terrified of tetanus. Hey, why don't you let just let me cover up dinner? Splendid ideal. We'd hate for it to get cold. He hated when it got cold. Here's a machete, freshly sharpened. Any games consist of two butts. On top of point of no shade clockwise district. We already we already read this. It's the same thing. No, I don't need you to repeat a game. Thank you. Away we go. Slice. Damn it. Oh, the last one was perfect. That was pretty good. I'd like, I'd like to see what you could do with a less clumsy weapon. Yeah, I said it. Machetes are dumb. You know, spirit's my favorite. She actually complimented me. Dinner is finally served. For real. The sounds, especially coming from the mask killers while they eat, which involves lifting their masks and shoving food up behind them, are nasty. Spirit, meanwhile, doesn't even eat. She's the only one who seems to really be in place of being dead. They're all dead, right? This is obviously hell. I mean... Come on, we're still trying to be mysterious here. You think mystery comes easy? Claudette and Dwight aren't the only ones who've been working their asses off to make this night perfect. Well, at least they're lifting their masks. This is only 99% as disgusting as it could be if they just try to mash stuff through their knuckles. Spirit, why aren't you hungry? The two best things about being dead is not having to eat. That's only one thing. Think about it, Project V. Number two is no number two. <laughs> one less thing to think about in the other way. I love her. She's got comedy, she's got... She's actually compliments me. Spirit's my favorite. Wait, doesn't want- I tried with Wait. he doesn't want to talk to me. Even if I wanted to eat, I have no idea what would actually follow. Fair point. You might have noticed, but I'm mostly just a bunch of dismembered body parts floating in a spectral form. You see how deep this cut on my abdomen is? I don't think my digestive tract connects anymore. Between the food and behavior of the group, this might be the worst meal in history. But even worse is they're staring at you. You're not eating. They don't like that. I think they want an explanation why. What do you tell them? This is gross. I'm sorry. Look at that seagull. <laughs> I got to. Guys, look. Wow, you ever see a seagull that big? I haven't. That's incredible. Anyway, what were we talking about? No misdirect. Yeah, she's right, Project V. Pretty lame. Oh, who, own who you are. Never compromise. Damn it. 
Spirit doesn't like me anymore. Didn't you wash up on this island with no memory of who you are and how you got here? Yes, you did. Poor thing. You have no idea the last time you ate a real meal, and you've been standing in the sun. But the sequel. Oh, he just made a lot of good points. I swear. You're beginning to feel lightheaded. It waved at me. <laughs> Maybe you need to eat to survive here. Either yeah, that or someone poisoned you. Oh wait, you haven't eaten, so you can't be poisoned. Hmm. Whatever the answer, you're clearly about to pass out. Oh, hey, it's me again. Your friend, mentor, and guide. Narrator to the narrator, the ocean. Not sure how I feel about that characterization, but I'll allow it. I brought you here, and I might be the only one who can help you now. There's only one thing you must do to survive. You have to figure out why you're really here. Well, it all started when I went on Steam. And I bought this game called Hooked on You. <laughs> oh, too far back, sorry, my bad. No one can tell you. Not unless you follow the right path. Or at least a right path. Always go right, never go left, got it. There's too many of those to count. Hopefully you pick at least one of them. Because there are even more wrong paths. Many of them lead to your demise. Others lead to something even worse. Stern seems over and having to fast forward back to where you were, am I right? Well this place holds many secrets. Even from Krish even from For this place holds many secrets, even from itself, but the one that truly matters can only be learned if you answer the most important question. Why are you here? I looked like something else about my but answer that and you'll learn the truth. The ultimate truth. Big. Mysterious. I gotta give it up to this ocean character. That's a quality early game storytelling. Hold on, I'm back. One more piece of advice. You've made many choices by now. Some of them I liked, some of them I did not. It's in your best interest to make choices that more choices that I like. Well, which ones did he like and which ones did he not? You wake up to find Huntress holding your limp body, gingerly pouring cool water into your mouth. Am I sure it's water? Duh! Oh, good. You're okay. The music changed and everything. This hearts in the background now. Oh god. Duh. Oh good. You're alive. Sometimes when I try and care for people, they have a way of ending up less alive than when I started. Ah, uh, it's because you don't feed them. Which would be a total bummer if that happened to you. It's been so long since I had a normal, happy, health and living person around. Duh. I am Russian. Usually, I'm just falling into the same old routine of smashing everyone's head up, heads open with a hatchet before I really get to know who they are as a person. So when you were trying to kill me like 20 times in the past week, just saying I'll just, all you had to do was not throw the hatchet, and maybe I would have stopped and talked. Just saying. What was that hatchet? <laughs> But you, you're not nearly as scared, or too busy writhing in pain to see me, for me. You feel nervous in her arms, not just because they're maybe crushing you a little bit, but because she's beautiful. I gotta say, that was actually a really nice speech. Good for you, Huntress. I didn't know you could talk. Yes, beautiful. But I was just gonna narrate that fact. Not, you know, say it out loud as a single word like some creep. Beautiful mask, your bunny mask. It's quite gorgeous. Nice recovery. But now that you're awake and talking, you gotta keep this up. Did you make it yourself? You're the first person to ever ask me that. Yes, I did. Duh. I did. You seem so quirky and cool. You could do anything. Own an Etsy store, be a doctor, why is it that you kill people? 
punch his sides. He can practically see the medleys flicking across her eyes. But she hasn't tried to kill you yet, so that's a good sign. Duh. It was all I was ever taught to do as a young girl. So I thought it was right. Even through the mask, you can see that Huntress is blushing a bit. Seems like your line of questioning has made her a little nervous. Hey, you didn't eat much at dinner. You want a snack? She offers you some jerky. Probably human jerky, but her spice game is on point because it smells pretty damn good. I mean, if it smells good. When on Murderer's Island, you might as well eat as the killers do, plus you really are hungry and you can chow on some jerky centrally, right? I'd love some. After a moment of quiet chewing on what you choose to believe is not human thigh meat, you decide to be bold and ask another question. Oh damn, I am bold. <laughs> Have you ever been in a relationship before? Dang, you're really going there. You do not play around much with me. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I... Oh, sorry. Duh, I, uh... Oh, just takes a moment to think deeply before I answer, and I must say, it's quite amusing to see this Hulk and Bombshell get all twisted up with those personal questions. Kudos to you, Project B. She's, uh, she's like sweating now. She has not been asked this, apparently. Do I choose to read this? I don't think I will. You guys can read. I'm just gonna... We're just gonna keep moving on. You hear the faintest giggles bubble out from behind Huntress's mask. Ha ha ha, you're so cute Huntress. No, it doesn't count. Whoa, what's this? You found something in the sand. Huntress reaches down to pick it up. It's gonna be a shell. Oh, it's a hair clip. It's a hair clip. Probably left by some girl. Was playing on the beach long ago, who is definitely still alive and not at all dead. Huntress closes the bag of jerky with the hair clip. Oh, she's resourceful. Seems like she's a little mixed up on how exactly this particular item works. Should you go with the flow or show off some of your knowledge of advanced human men? Ah. Uh. I, I, I am advanced human men. I, I advance human, yes. You silly goose. Oh my god, I hate this game, but I love it. You chuckle before reaching for the bag of jerky. You take the Barret off, Barret off and collect a lock of Huntress's hair, clipping it back in an attractive swoop. Much better. Huntress is so happy that you taught her something new about human trinkets. She touches the clip in her hair with a shy smile. It'd be cool if you could see it, but you can't. Just as things are really heating up, you hear a flurry of footsteps behind you and you quickly spring around, ready to fend off whatever new danger has popped up on this strange island. Only to find that it's Dwight and Claudette splinter across the beach, clipboards on hand which they wave in the air above their heads. And it's very important to stick to the itinerary and attend each event as scheduled. Playing sick for cute flat points was not part of this evening's activities. It's strictly that's strictly allotted in for after campfire story time. At this rate, it will be late. Playing sick? No, I was no time for excuses. Well, there is, but that's scheduled for after work. After what comes after the flood. Okay. Go, 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 go. Hey, okay. going, going, I'm going. Ah, we're getting into some real good beach music now. Yeah, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna laugh. <laughs> Once everyone has gathered at the fire pit, Dwight and Claudette quickly make an announcement. We're not gonna blame anyone in particular, but someone, and we're not gonna say who, so don't worry, you hasn't been sticking to the schedule. 
and we'll only have time for one person to share this special spooky nighttime story. Just one story, but story time is my favorite activity. This is a narrative heavy experience. You're telling us that only one person gets to share? How will we decide who? Oh great, we have to decide as a group. That never does well. Whoever did this, step up now. I swear I won't be head angry. I'll really chop your head clean off. No fuss, no muss. Voice traveling, you realize it's fine for you, but you embrace your fate. So, 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 hi, everyone. I think they're talking about me. To be honest, I still don't understand how this whole schedule thing works. I guess I lost track of time while I was passed out. Been there before, even though it's taken some pressure off of me. Oh, wait a second. Which is an absolute dream come true. Is it really fair to pick on the newbie? You know, thank you, Ray. Seriously, has anything ever happened on schedule even once? Thank you, Spirit. <laughs> Damn it, Donald! I love that, I don't know why. If you try to flex that authority gimmick one more time, so help me, I'll snap your head off so quick that I'll drown you in his blood, Cynthia. Fuss and muss are back on. You two know I love to hack, slash, and slice. We all know you love to kill. It's almost all you talk about. Nobody named any names. Who even knows any names? Not us. I renounced my name. Who's Donald? Who's Dwight? Who even knows anymore? Call me nobody. Nobody. <laughs> but we still gotta get started on story time, so... Project V, who do you think should go? Ah, damn it, that's a name. Please pick someone quickly so that this tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. Thank you. Ah, uh, can I hear a story from Trickster? What, what? He just shows up and he's just not gonna do anything? Okay. So, Huntress and I had a moment. I still really like Spirit. I want to give Wraith another chance. He did say story time is his favorite. I, I'm going to try Wraith again. Don't let me down again, but you know, strike one. Let's try again. Come on, Wraith. I choose you. Pikachu. Sorry, Wraith. Whoa, whoa. This ex entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid an IP infringement long suit. Let's <laughs> begin with Can't Trace well, yeah? Sorry, sorry. Uh, the Pikachu? Who's that? What's in the name? Oh, scary stories. I think I missed that. Oh well. I'm not really I'm not really one for scary stories. Life is scary enough as it is. You literally carry around a skull and a spine as your little prop. I like how she says it's a prop. As the other killers laugh. Laugh. Wraith holds up his skull and gazes into its hollow, dark eye sockets. If you're looking for something Shakespearean in the story, look elsewhere. This is a tale of madness, of stunning, and the soul of death, and never return. Once upon a time, a young man worked at a junkie. The man was quiet kept to himself, just wanted to avoid trouble. While the boss dealt with clients, the young man operated the crusher, turned an old curse into cubes of twisted metal. One day, right before the crusher occurred, he noticed something. Blood. From the trunk. He opened it found a frightened stranger, bound and gagged. The young man reeled. Was he about to accidentally murder the stranger? How could this have happened? He freed the stranger, who ran off into the waiting arms of the boss, the owner of the junkyard. Before his shaking employee he could tell him about the mistake they had nearly made, the boss took out a knife and swift, swiftly slit the stranger's throat.
The young man fell to his knees, unable to comprehend what was happening. As he stared at the ground, too shocked to cry, the boss approached him. What, what did you do? He asked the boss. I did your job for you. What, what do you mean? That's, that's not my job. My job is to crush the curse. The boss let up a miserable scoff. His face contorted in evil disdain for the pathetic wrench in front of him. Why do you think we're crushing these cars? To save space? Who do you think my clients are? Uh, I don't know, mumbled the young man. Yes, you do, screamed the boss. Deep down, you've always known what was happening here. You just didn't want to admit it to yourself. Your hands are clean. He's, he's fine, all things. He's fine. My clients, give me money. And I take care of their problems, eliminate the witnesses, tie up the loose ends, or actually, you do. No, oh, the young man went burn as the boss towered over above him. Yes, you're nothing more than an executioner, and you've reaped hundreds of souls. The young man's body shook with soft spasms as he tried to stop crying. It was when the boss started laughing that it happened. Something the young man changed. He stood up, now taller than the boss. A flank, faint glimmer of fear overtook the snarl on the older man's face. The young man's face was empty. Empty. As he grabbed the boss's throat and dragged him to the car in the brush. Empty. As he picked up the boss and stuffed him inside. Empty. As he slammed the truck down on him. It's stupid fat head sticking out, begging for mercy. Empty as he started the machine, staring at the boss and its sniveling, crying, wet face. Empty as he grabbed the boss's head, dug his fingers in further, piercing the skin. Empty as he squeezed and pulled. Empty as he heard bones pop and snapping. Or in the boss's head, still attached to his spine, was cleanly out of its disgusting stack of a body. The wave sails back into the eye sockets of the skull. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how good you are, how innocent, how kind, how full of love you once were. When you look into the eyes of people, you will show them. Go back. An awkward silence falls upon the room until. Offer a effusive praise. Ask about the story, make a joke. I don't really want to ask him about the story. Because I feel like he doesn't want to talk about it. Um, I don't think, I think it's insensitive to make a joke. So I guess I'll offer praise. When you look into the eyes of evil, you will surely go mad. My god, that's brilliant. Get this man a screenplay, you know, we'll scroll these cameras. I'm glad you didn't give us any Shakespeare, because that story makes Shakespeare look like a slack-jawed, mouth-breathing idiot. Thank you. I'm just... I'm too overcome. Uh, I'm a little... too... enthusiastic, but... As you sit down, the other killers look at each other, unsure if you're joking. Um... Yes. Wraith, on the other hand, is absolutely sure you're joking. You may have gone a little... What well, fuck? Wraith's gonna kill me! I I gotta I gotta get good with Huntress and Spirit and maybe I can get in with Trapper still, but Oh my god, I'm not too good with me. Nathan and I just don't we don't click. On that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit so that they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. True moment of peace and tranquility that lasts for all of seven seconds because Trix shows up and he's blaring his latest song. Oh, it's actually his. Uh, oh, it was his music. It stopped. Hey, baby, you look lonely. Mind if I join you? He doesn't wait for an answer. I know you've been hearing from these guppies all day, but I just want you to hear something from a big fish like me. 
something special. Those in charge of this island don't want you to hear. I am the ultimate catch on this island. The only lobster in an ocean of sardines. No one can give you what I can. You just have to find me. Come find me, baby. Me. Okay. Alright, just the leaves. You're a bit confused about what to make of this cryptic clues. Yeah, yeah, you can say that. But you aren't going to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. Wait, the punch is you. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Hey, probably not making a great impression because uh, I guess that's not really my thing. I just know that if you got to know me, then, I mean, look, the others aren't around. I really hate the fire pit. I just kind of hate fire in general. Maybe we could go back to the pool. Or like, I don't know. Whatever, you know? Dip in the pool with the weight, you've come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow him, but offer like that. Just don't forget our little talk. Oh, I'm just going, I don't get to choose. You and your storyteller friends slip into the water. Oh god. It's just the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump from the ocean into the pool, you're also pretty sure your killer companion can handle it. Hey, uh, uh, um, hey, do you, do you remember my story? You mean, the one you just told, like, a minute ago? Yeah. Um, yes. Did you, I mean, like, what did you think of, uh, the young man in the story? Do you think he's weird? He's not weird, he's weird. He's not weird. Well, I don't think he's weird. Oh, shit. But he is bad, and I'm deeply upset with him. What? That wasn't the options. You didn't have the knowledge you needed to begin with, but what's important is what you do with the knowledge once you have it. In the end, he's no better than the monster he can. Oh, I see. I didn't, it's, I didn't mean that. Oh. Well, that makes sense. Um, did the young man remind you of anyone? Oh yeah, yes and no. I think that's what makes it such a great story. It's unique and surprising, but relatable and familiar. I think we all know someone like that, young man. I think we all have a little of him inside us. It's better. Wraith Giggles, not in a gross way like you're thinking, but a very silly one. I assume he's imagining a tiny little version of himself dancing around in his home belly, because that's just who he is. You notice the temperature has dropped significantly. Is it cold in this water now, or is it just me? I feel like my toes are turning into ice cubes. Wraith sizes up, and seizes up, and squeezes his eyes shut. Please, I, I can't be around any cube talk, nonsense now. I heard that story from somebody else a long time ago. That story you just told us two minutes ago? Yeah, exactly, the one that wasn't about me. <laughs> Usually, usually we'd be nervous that we were about to make things awkward when we budge in. But obviously we couldn't hold a candle to whatever was happening here tonight. I don't want to go to bed. Either way, it's time for bed. For you, but not us. After you go to sleep, that's what we buddy. After spending all day cooped up in those tight little safari themed resort uniforms, you just know those two rage late into the night. If you're not here to party with them, you've got your own repressed relationships to tend to. Why can't I party with them? I've already taken a nap twice today. I think I'm fine. You head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting on this chilly night. Looking into the crackling embers, you think about Wave's story. Brought the young man and found out he was part of the sinister plot. What don't you know about your current situation? Is it something that would terrify you? Something that will make you snap? What if you look into the eyes of evil? What if you like it? Before you can dwell too much on your fate, Claudette and Dwight arrive, the now familiar creepy smile stretching from ear to ear. It's a bit menacing to see a smile like that lit by firelight. You must, you must apologize for the accommodations. 
We weren't prepared for another guest, but we're gonna make you comfortable or die trying. They hand over a pillow and blanket and welcome you to stumble up by the fire. Perhaps some music will put you at ease. Just try to keep the volume to a minimum. Oh, the guests aren't the type you'll want to rob of their beauty sleep. And it's a minigame again. Away we go. As you relax and you look into the fire, the radio begins to fuzz and You examine it and decide that you might adjust the dial and fix it. Oh, which one? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for a hundred. Oh, 98. Let's see what's on this station. Turn off because uh, I oh um, I didn't mean to turn off the whole video. I was just hoping to change the station. No matter how many things you listen to, you still can't sleep. You decide to ask one of the killers to spend a little more time with you until you're sleepier. Who would you like to summon to your, to your side as you lay by the fire? All right, we went on the art for Trapper. We got to hear Rafe's story and you spent some time with him in the pool. We woke up with Huntress, kinda. So, what if I went to sleep with Spirit now? You know, I'll try, try to, I'm trying to feel them all up. Mm, that's a poor choice of words. I'm trying to learn more about them in a <laughs> totally non feely way. Except for Huntress, apparently, where I just went right in. But let's go, Spirit. Spirit. Are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. Spirit tells you her secret for falling asleep when she's feeling restless. I like to listen to flute music, dab on some essential oils, and steam my pores. Really? Why? Even the dead like to relax. I don't really have any of those things around. Spirit reaches out and presents you with a unique item. It's a small comb carved from bamboo. That's kind of cool. I guess you could hold on to this. It was a gift from my mother. I will want it back though, and if you lose it, well... Can I get you revenge on me? If it's the last thing I do... I don't know if I could go to sleep after that. <laughs> you finally start to feel sleepy, except... Maybe this isn't really a sleepy feeling. Maybe you're paralyzed. You try to keep your eyes open, but you can't. Darkness overtakes you. The dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. It shouldn't still be as spooky by now. You've had a whole day of strange voices in your head, but this one is still undeniably on. Had a good time with a private yacht today, huh? That comforting rocking sensation, that was all me. Oh yeah, you're welcome. You awake suddenly to see someone moving over you. God, I just can't sleep, huh? Trapper sitting beside you, sketching portrait. Oh, you're awake. I saw you with the spirit right before bedtime. You should know, they're not what they seem. Not like me, who is obviously completely honest and trustworthy. You know, I gotta give him credit. He's not wrong. He has been very honest and very well. I don't know about trustworthy, but he has been very honest. I was out tra checking to make sure you weren't sleeping near one of my. Actually, never mind. Just be careful what you say. He's got traps. But since I'm here, I'd like to share two things with you. One, I do not take rejection. Oh God, who does? Two. The first thing is very important to remember. Were you drawing me? Trapper doesn't answer. You're not drawing stink lines radiating out from my from me, are you? Still nothing from Trapper. Look, I'm not an easy guy to get along with, but I am an easy guy to spend time with. That would make sense if you choose to spend time with me tomorrow. The rest of the scum live like, like rats. They wouldn't know. Good time if I bit them on the axe. I mean that literally. 
point is, if you select me, you're in it for a day of luxury, extravagance, and fuck. Yes, I said fuck. And I don't pick you. Remember what I said earlier, or well, it might be the last thing you ever forget. But hey, you look tired. Get some, get some rest. Sleep. Maybe you can sleep well if you can. Just try not to roll over to be about 15 feet to your left. Finally alone. For real, this time, maybe. You drift off to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned. Do I actually go to sleep? I think I am. Wait a second, where are we? This isn't... Oh jeez, it is. It's one of those reality show confessional rooms where all the contestants talk directly to the camera. Wait, so I get to hear what they all think about me? Oh, hell yeah, good. Duh, I think today really went well. These were some of my first interactions with someone who isn't a parent that did end in bloodshed or, oh, uh, untimely perishing in my Russian cottage. So I've counted today as a win, no matter what happens. What do I think of a newcomer? Um, do I have to say? Oh, I do. Okay, hmm. Attractive. Mysterious. I really don't know that many other words. Since I was raised by my mom in the woods until she was skewered by an elk. I had to wash her entrails off my Sarah fan. That being said, the other three should make sure to be on their guard. I don't know who this newcomer will want to spend time with tomorrow, but I, for one, would not let my go down easily. Who knows what the others? Okay, so Huntress likes me. Oh, let's just so run. Hey, I think he knows more than he's letting on about this place, but he's a hard nut to crack. Meanwhile, it's just spirit is just screaming all time, major buzzkill, and Trapper. Oof, where do I even begin with Trapper? He's buff, sure, but daddy issues much? Sheesh. Duh, look, I don't need anyone. I've been perfectly fine on my own since my mother died. I ate a fine diet of our dear, bear, and human, and I'm as fit as a fiddle. That being said, something about this newcomer makes me think that I might be missing out on some huge part of this thing called life. Alright, so Huntress still likes me. That's good. I've made a good impression with her. If I'm being honest, I want to kill just about every person I meet within a minute of meeting them. Given the few people I can tolerate, I want to see suffer for a long time before I kill them. But this person, for some reason, I would like them to continue living. For now. One false step and haha, <laughs> well you know everyone calls me Trapper for a reason. And they better call me Trapper. I'm gonna call him Evan next time. I swear if I watch this later and you list me as Evan, I'm going to kill the ship. Okay. Okay, Trapper, I don't know yet. He, uh, he's, he likes me, doesn't like me, I don't know. I'll float there. Yeah, today was fun. I don't want to get ahead of myself or really um, invest in something that might hurt me, so I don't know. Maybe we'll just see how it goes. Or maybe they realize I'm not the one for them. They seem pretty smart, so that's probably what will happen. God, he makes me feel so bad. I'm trying, Ray, right? kinda. I gotta learn to go easier on myself. Who can love me if I can't learn if I can't love myself? There you go. See, positivity, guys, is important. Always make sure that you love yourself before you can love anyone else. You're as important as anyone else. Even even Trapper is important in his own special way. I know that everyone thinks of me as a beautiful, cold-blooded monster. I can't help it. Circulation just isn't my thing. I don't choose to be cold. This cute hat, robe, okay. Those are a choice, sure. If someone were to come around and capture my heart, at least that beats me to stab in it. Besides, if I'm gonna get bloody revenge on a society that's used me and thrown me away, maybe it won't hurt to have a little help. She been a lock, still alive. I'm still alive, guys. I made it past one day. And that's gonna be where we end it. I did it. First day, we've done it. Uh, so, Huntress really likes me. That's good. Brief. He's interested. He's hopeful. So, this, this is a shot. 
spirit. Uh, I'm hoping it's interested. Uh, she did say she wouldn't mind having someone up. So, it's the uh, Huntress and I seem to be like on the best level. Wraith and spirit are kind of down there. Trapper, I don't know, just yet. Trapper, I don't know how I feel about that. Trapper just yet. We'll see. I wanted to be with him, but I didn't. But now he's threatening me, so now I'm scared. And, but at the same time, I think Huntress could protect me. Spirit could probably protect me. I don't know about Wraith. I think the Trapper might be able to keep Wraith's ass, but who knows? We'll see. And then this Trickster. I want to talk to Trickster more. That's cool. I want to see him. I want to see if there's other characters too. We didn't see Felix, but we ate. Well, I didn't eat Felix. Well, I might have the joke about Felix. But, anyways, that's going to be it for part two of Hooked on You, uh, Dead by Daylight Dating Sim. And I, I still haven't decided if it's a good thing I spent money on this or not. <laughs> it's funny. It's got me hooked. On you. Uh, I actually didn't even mean to do that, but hey, now I did. Thank you guys so much for watching though. If you enjoyed this, feel free to subscribe and check out my other videos that I got. Uh, put ones also on my channel. There's also plenty of other videos you guys can check out. Um, you know, I'll see you guys next time though. Until then, stay safe and I'll catch you later. Goodbye.